Good evening. I apologize in advance because I'm going to sound like a broken record. Some of this you've heard before in my previous lessons, but just some further thoughts, as Paul Harvey would have said, and now for the rest of the story. But I was thinking about, as we go about life, the things that we talk about, our daily discussions, and I question sometimes what's really important. But you know, in our daily discussions, if we get to talking about politics or religion, entertainment, which TV shows do you watch, what movies do you go to, which life choices do you make, what are you for, what are you against, we can get really serious and we can talk at length and we can actually take some pretty firm stands. It's okay to take a firm stand, but do you do it in a Christian way? Which leads us to our religious discussions. We can get real dogmatic about church attendance, instrumental music, the Lord's Supper, women's role in the church, the Holy Spirit, or who is going to heaven? What is our Christian attitude? Or are we just proud that we have it right? You know, I sometimes wonder if I were in charge of the pearly gates and who gets in and who doesn't. If I'm honest with you tonight, I wouldn't let me in. I just pray that God is more lenient and extends more mercy than I extend to myself. If we'd have kept going tonight, we would have come to James, the fourth chapter, verse six. If we think we are so proud because we've got it right, I would caution us because James 4, 6 is about the middle of the verse. He starts and says, Wherefore the scripture saith, God resisteth the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So just before I get all puffed up and proud of the fact that we got it right on some of those points that I just talked about, we ought to stop and think about that verse. You know, we have a tendency to be willing to engage in all sorts of discussions about points of doctrine, again, being dogmatic. We'll debate about what the Bible says. We might even talk about whether it was a big S or a little s. But then I always come back to Titus 3, verse 9. I've worn this out with some of you, so that's the reason I said broken record but avoid foolish controversies and genealogies and strife and disputes about the law, for they are useless and worthless. Reject a divisive person after a first and second warning. Similar thought in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 15 and 16, but avoid worldly and empty chatter for it will lead to further ungodliness. And I think about that as I've gotten older and more crotchety and grumpy and grouchy. I apologize because I've got a tendency now to avoid getting into those kinds of discussions. And I do that not because of what you think, but I'm looking at me and I know what I'm going to do. If we get very far into this, I'm going to get grouchy and grumpy. I'm going to get judgmental. I'm going to get annoyed first and then maybe even angry. All of those are ungodly. It just led to ungodliness in me. So the way that I try to do that is you will I apologize to you because I will sometimes just shut it down and shut it off and say, this is really not worth talking about. I'm sorry, I apologize, but if I do, I'm going to fall into all those traps that I just told you that I will do. And besides that, I'll go back to James again. Anytime that both sides are going back and forth, and if we are at least hearing one another, that's what we're doing, we're hearing 
we're not doing. So all this hearing each other is taken away from the time that I could be a doer of the word and not just a hearer only. So that's another reason that I try not to, excuse me, waste my time on these things that at the end of the day, you're still going to think the way you think and I'm still going to think the way I think. And we're going to both hope that God cuts us some slack and that he allows us to still enter into heaven because we were kind and gentle and humble and loving with one another. We can be totally right in our view of what is right and wrong and be totally wrong in how we present it. Pride, arrogance, smugness, looking down on people, being harsh, stern, unloving, all of those things are sinful. I think the scripture says all of those things are sinful. So if we do that, then we put ourselves in the very same boat of the people that we're criticizing. Because with God, sin is sin. He doesn't distinguish between, you know, those really horrible sins and those little ones that we sort of engage in once in a while. With God, we're all the same. And I close by saying, as Bob was talking earlier tonight, and he and I have observed this, we see all these differences, and they exist. That's just the way it is. But how we talk and treat one another, we go out and we have these discussions that I just talked about, and then we all come to worship and sing angry words. Really? Do we mean that? We just got through having a knockdown drag out in the lobby about some point of doctrine. And then we come in and sing about angry words. Oh, let them never from the tongue unbridled slip. And then the chorus of that, love one another, thus saith the Savior. I think we really need to think about what we're seeing and apply it to our lives. Those are just a few of the thoughts I wanted to share tonight. And if they apply or if you have any need that you want to share with the congregation, then make it known as we stand together and sing. <laughs>